In the workshop, a Stuart 504 renovation, part 4. And to start this episode, I'm showing how I fit some thermal insulation on the inside parts of the side panels. Quite a long time ago, I rebuilt a Stuart 504 boiler and I didn't bother replacing the insulation on the side panels. And when I lit the burner and raised steam, quite a lot of the paint burnt off the side panels, and this is no good at all. When I first bought this boiler, via the online internet auction site that we all know and love, it came complete with two asbestos panels. I assumed that the original material was asbestos because it looked like asbestos, smelt like asbestos and tasted like asbestos too. No, that was a joke. Don't take that seriously, whatever you do. I know some viewers out there take everything very, very seriously. That was a joke, a play on words. I do not taste, smell sniff or scratch asbestos in any way. Instead, I'm using an asbestos substitute. This is a more modern material, and as far as I'm aware, it's a by-product of China clay. And what I'm doing at the moment is using some cyanoacrylic adhesive, or CA glue, or super glue, to stick this stuff to the inside edge of the side panels, starting with side panel number one. Really, the best stuff to stick this to the side panels is probably not super glue. An impact adhesive would be better, the main problem is that this kind of adhesive quickly soaks into the material and makes it more difficult for it to bond to the side panel, but after a couple of applications of the adhesive, it seems to work okay. It's important to bend one edge of it so that it fits into the curved part at the top, just like I'm showing in this clip. It's actually quite fiddly to do, and it takes a couple of attempts because it keeps trying to move out of the way of the curvature at the top part of the side panel, but eventually it sticks. I'm going to put two layers of this on the inside surface of each side panel because I'm taking no chances and do not want this nice new painted surface to bubble. And talking about painted surfaces, you will notice that the painted surface of this side panel is resting on another piece of this thermal insulation because if I rest the side panel directly on the bench, it's going to get scratched. There are different thicknesses of this thermal insulation available. This is the thickest I could get, which is 3mm, so I thought that by doubling it up to 6mm, then it would be much better. And I can hear you all saying, oh, where do we get this from? It looks like wonderful stuff. Well, the answer to that, once again, is I buy it from my friends at Blackgates Engineering, and I have done for many years, because it's also very, very useful for lagging boilers. I don't lag the boilers that are covered in the mahogany cladding. I'm talking about lagging the boilers when you clad them in brass like on a model steam locomotive or traction engine. So as you can see, this stuff is more than adequate for cladding the side panels. And with a bit of luck, when the burner is lit and the boiler is in steam, the black paint on the outside of the side panels will not blister with the heat. What I'm doing at the moment is using a small screwdriver through the holes in the side panels to make some holes in the cladding so that when I fit the bolts, they push through quite easily. This is just a dummy run test fit, and it's really for the purposes of the video only, because I haven't put the boiler battle in place. What I'm going to show is how, if you do it this way, you cannot tighten the bolts sufficiently to hold the side panels in place properly. What will happen is you will get localised crushing of the insulation, as well as distortion of the side panels around the area where the bolts apply the pressure. The original shaped asbestos inner side panels were quite solid. Asbestos is a much more firm material than this. So that was okay, but this material is much softer. And in this clip you can clearly see how the sides have become curved where they meet the end plates. And it's the same at both sides. When I put the last bolt in, the side starts to curve. And also you can see the two layers of the thermal insulation are separating because they're not stuck together very well. This stuff really does soak in the cyanoacrylate adhesive, and it takes several applications, but eventually, with the help of some spring clamps and a bit more thermal insulation to stop the marking of the paint, it finally sticks. But mechanically, I just don't like the way this is held together. I figured out a much better way to fit the side panels to the front and back end plates. I'll show you how I did this shortly, but first of all, I have to remove the side panel that I've already fitted. When I looked at the side panels in place, I realised that I hadn't painted the inside edges of them. I could still see some unpainted cast iron, which of course would go rusty. 
So I sprayed the inside edges and while I was at it I gave the end plates another coat of paint as well. And while this was drying I took some time to polish up the boiler barrel. As soon as I raise steam with this boiler and heat the copper it will change colour and start to tarnish. But I thought I would start off with it nice and shiny. I also removed the marked paint from the tap and polished that up too. So it's now time to fit the tap into the top of the boiler bush. First of all I did a dummy run to make sure it ended up in the right place and thankfully it did. So then I applied some Loctite 542 to the thread and this wonderful thread sealant will stop any chance of a leak because the last thing I want is nasty streaks of white water residue down the boiler as well. Then I made some of these. I actually made eight of them. Here are the first four. Just little brass bushes. And what are these for, I wonder? These brass bushes fit onto the bolts so that when I screw the side panels into the front and rear cast iron supports, the localised pressure of the bolts will not crush the insulation and therefore will not bend the side panels. A simple solution that was very easy to achieve. And as you can see clearly from this clip, the side panels are no longer being bent as I tighten the bolts. And as most of the assembly of a 504 boiler takes place with the boiler on its side, I'm still using a spare piece of thermal insulation on the bench to stop the marking of the side panels. This clip shows the exhaust pipe in place, complete with the small exhaust amplifier that I outlined in the last video fitted to the top. And now on goes the chimney which fits over the entire assembly. And from episode 1 this is what the boiler used to look like. Although it was new, it was rusty, quite uneven, not finished very well and needed some TLC. And after quite a bit of work, well not really that much work and it's a labour of love anyway, this is what it looks like now and it's a thing of beauty. The original twin spirit burners that come with this boiler, and by the way I didn't get one with this one, are surprisingly efficient and generate rather a lot of heat, but they're not controllable. So all that happens when you're running your engine is the safety valve blows off all the time. I have an idea for a special internal baffle system, so I can use a standard gas burner, but it will concentrate the heat where I need it the most, directly onto the tubes that hang below the boiler. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.